In my last video, I made a plane iron out of a lawn edger blade. And I was actually really surprised at how well it came out. I was able to shape it, polish it, grind a bevel, hone it to a sharp edge, and then it seemed to work pretty well. It would slice a piece of paper and carve nice little curls off a piece of wood. But even though it did all that stuff, I'm still not 100% sure this is hardened, high carbon steel. Because I need to know how long it lasts, how well it stands up under real woodworking conditions. And in order to do that, the only thing I can do is make a plane, put it in, and plane some wood. So at the end of my last video, I promised that the next thing I was going to do was make a fast, easy plane that still worked really well. And since I promised, I guess I have to do it. So we know that we're going to make our plane out of wood, but that still leaves a lot of unanswered questions because there's a lot of ways to make a wooden plane. For instance, when most people hear wooden plane, they think about something like this. And even though it looks simple, we're not making this. Just take a look at the mortise carved in the middle of this plane. It's got crazy housing dados with tapered sides, a channel for the cap iron screw, and a complicated carved escapement for the chips to come out. Not only is something like this really difficult, I literally don't even have the tools to do something like this, and I don't think the average woodworker does either. Another option would be a sort of hybrid plane, like this one. These have become a lot more popular with hobby woodworkers recently, because they have the light weight of a wooden plane, but they're fully adjustable because you actually use the guts of a metal plane to make one. The only problem is, if you're going to make a plane like this, you kind of need a metal plane to start with, and that makes the whole thing a lot less accessible for somebody who doesn't already have a lot of hand tools. So this is out. Probably the most realistic option is to make something called a Krenov style plane, and I've got one right here. James Krenov was a cabinet maker. He only died about 10 or 15 years ago. He was hugely influential as a furniture maker during his life, but now that he's gone, he might even be better remembered for his planes, because he took the super complicated wooden plane from Europe and simplified it by creating a construction where you actually laminate several pieces of wood together to make the plain body. And then instead of a complicated wedge and mortise setup, he designed this really interesting pin with one flat side that always rotates to be in the perfect location. So no matter what angle your wedge is cut at or where it's sitting, the Krenov plane can grab that wedge and hold on to it. So a design like this that's made up of several pieces of wood and is mechanically simple, this is what we want to go with. Now, I love this plane. I've made several in this style, and I even read a really good book on the subject. It's called Making and Mastering Wooden Planes by David Fink, and I totally recommend looking at it. But even though that's a good book, I think the author makes things probably a little bit more complicated than they need to be. Some of the aspects of making it, like putting in little pins to keep it together during glue up, and carving the pin in a really specific way, and shaping the wedge in a very fussy manner, I don't think that stuff's necessary. I think we can simplify this basic idea a great deal, get a plane that's just as functional, a little easier to use, and much easier to make. Now, I hate to spoil the plot of my own videos, but I wasn't going to go into a topic as complicated as plane making without doing a prototype first. And here's the prototype. Now look, I know, it's ugly. It's absolutely hideous, like a wooden pickle. I get that, but I didn't make it to be pretty. I made it to be functional. And it works. Here it is, planing pine, oak, maple cherry, and walnut. It handles all of these woods, it makes some very fine, wispy shavings, and it can take a slightly heavier shaving sometimes, too. Of course, this doesn't answer the biggest question. How well does the iron work? And the answer is, it works great for about 10 minutes, and then it goes dull. And you can hone it up and work on it some more, and then it goes dull again. I've been working with this plane on and off for a week, and I've come to the inescapable conclusion that this iron is not hardened high carbon steel. However, the good news is that making this prototype plane taught me a whole bunch of things about plane making and about how to make it quick and efficient. 
So we are, in this video, going to be able to make a fast and really good bench plane with limited tools and materials. But we've still got to do something about the iron, because this thing just isn't going to fly, and you really need the iron before you build the plane. So I have a solution, but it's not pretty. You might want to avert your eyes. Okay, so maybe all of that seemed a little bit extreme, but let me explain a couple of things. This Buck Brothers 2-inch chisel is 2 inches wide, 3 inches long, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Is it hardened? You bet it is. So it's definitely, unquestionably, high carbon steel. No guessing games. It already has a bevel, so that doesn't need to be ground. Good size, good shape. And Home Depot sells that chisel for $13. Now, if I could just buy an iron like this for 13 bucks, I would do it. This thing's ready to go. Now, obviously I did some work to it. Aside from cutting off the handle, it was also sort of wedge-shaped. It was a little thicker at the back end than at the front end, and that's not really good for the kind of plane we're making. It's better for it to be parallel. So I just took it to the belt sander and ground it down a little bit. Everything that I just did took me about half an hour. So for $13 and half an hour's work, I've got a plane iron. So I know exactly how I'm going to build the plane because making the wooden pickle taught me a ton of things about what to do and what not to do. But I just realized that this video is already almost 10 minutes long and I want to be as detailed and involved as I can possibly be with the plane build so that it's really simple. So I think I should cut this into two parts. In this video, we've already figured out how to make a good iron. And if you want to follow along with me, spreading out the videos gives you time to go ahead and get a chisel, make the iron, and be ready to do the build with me when that video comes out two weeks from now. Now, I bought my chisel, this Buck Brothers 2-inch chisel from Home Depot and it was $13, but since I found that it's also on Amazon, for $15 with free shipping. It's sold under two brand names, Buck and Great Neck. I've linked to both of those in the description to make it easy for you. Um, and, oh, as an added bonus, these chisels are also made in America. Uh, at least the one I bought is. So, if you want to follow along with this build, you can grab your chisel, do the work to the iron, and be ready when the next video comes out. And hey, before I go, I would just like to mention a couple things I've learned about Patreon in the last month. When I first got on the platform, I thought it was just going to be a convenient way for the people who like my videos to give me a little bit of support every month and make this channel more sustainable. But what I've found since then is that Patreon is actually working to create a community for artists and creative people online. And it's not just the big community of Patreon, but every little patron account is its own community. 
So, in addition to mentioning my new patrons, George B. and Gregory Towers, thanks a lot guys, really appreciate it, I'd also like to point out how my patrons are contributing to the community on my Patreon site. Uh, for instance, George B. is doing a rehab and restoration of an incredible vintage grinder. And he went to the community section of my Patreon page and posted an amazing picture collage that shows all of the progress he's made stripping down refurbishing and reassembling this beautiful vintage motor with incredible coil windings and oil cups and honestly it's a project that I would never even attempt and one of my patrons is just killing it. So I'm getting a lot more out of patron than just money. I'm getting all these incredible experiences and getting a window into what other people are doing and I'm just enjoying it so much. So if you'd like to check out what's going on on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash Rex Kruger, and even if that doesn't interest you, thanks so much just for watching this video.